Hello, my name is Julie the Dragon, and I am a film fiction writer. Welcome to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number one o three. I am your host Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James Cork. Hey Norman, hey everybody. How's everything going? Hi right, man, I'm fine. I'm fine. How about you? I'm good. Here we have uh, 14 wonderful people watching on live on the live stream as I am working on commissions and we are doing this podcast. Okay, cool. That's awesome. And hello, 14 <coughs> to 13 or maybe 15 viewers on the live stream and for you at home. And our guest for today is a local fanfic writer who is with me right now. And he is Julie the Dragon. How are you, man? Hi, everyone. I'm good. So, just to verify, should we call you Jewel Dragon Eater? I prefer Jewel Eater Dragon. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll just call you Dragon then. Dragon is more, more easier to pronounce. Or you can call me my acronym, Jed. <laughs> <laughs> Jed? Yeah, if you look at how it's spelled. Uh, oh, okay, Jed. You know what? I think I'm going to call you Jet as well because I was going to call you the small, the the shorter version of Jewel, but then I realized I don't want to spend the entire episode calling him Jew. So let's go with Jet. Yeah. <laughs> so Jet, how fine. are you? I'm um, I'm actually quite fine, thank you very much, Norman. So okay, for the viewers at home, me and him are in the same room right now. No jokes, thank you very much. <laughs> what are you guys doing, oh. Norman? Do you have to come out of something? Well, play the song that I always use for stuff like this, Careless Whisper, and you'll get it. (laughs) (laughs) Priceless, priceless. But anyway, before we move on, Jade, we need to ask you the four important questions. And question number one is, who is your favorite character? If you follow my uh, film fiction site, it's always Twilight. (laughs) Twilight is a good character. Twilight is a good character. I love Twilight. <laughs> She's been getting kind of like the shaft this season, though. Mm. Actually, I didn't mind her after the whole princess thing, but before that, yeah, I was a little apprehensive about it. But yeah, you get to learn to love with, learn to live with it. Finally, someone who has common sense and does not hate the princess Alec on Twilight. Yay! I don't hate Prince Princess Twilight either. Yeah, but general internet people, you know who James. Mm. The thing is, just because she's a alicorn now doesn't mean she her whole attitude changes. She's still the same Twilight. Yes, she's got wings. Mm-hmm. Live with it. <laughs> you have to admit, though, her wings make her way, way, way more adorable than ever. True that. True. I don't know. I still like her be- before the wings, but eh, whatever yeah. works. I'll still buy the blushy with wings. Though. <laughs> That's good. So, what's your favorite episode? Compared to from season one to now, I can't remember which. There's been quite a few good ones, really. Tell you what, give me a minute or two. I'll think of one. Okay. Well, for me personally, for this season, I do like Pinky Pride. It's the Weird L episode, and it's really awesome. But it it doesn't star your waifu. Power ponies, power ponies, power ponies. And Rarity takes me in Hatton. And Bats. <laughs> and Pinky Pride. Also, they're in Don't. That was a great episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Let's not forget about uh, Simple Ways. That episode was hilarious. Oh, oh true, true. man. The Philly Vanilli was a great episode as well. You know what? Why true, don't true, we say that this that. season is the best episode ever and that's it? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's, it's easier and faster. Oh, true. Well, season 4 is great. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you don't have any ideas right now? What, for the best, uh, uh, my best personal, personal yeah, favorite, favorite episode? A uh, little hard to think right now. No, I don't have one which is really my favorite. I have a few which I do like. Though, sadly, none comes to mind right now. <laughs> Lesson Zero. Lesson Zero starts... Uh, mm, Lesson Zero was actually quite good, but uh, seeing Twilight go all <laughs> crazy, crazy now. Nah. It wasn't my favorite. It's, what about It's About Time? It's About Time. Which one was that? Future Twilight episode. Oh, that was interesting. Yes. Yes. The whole fact that Twilight was too impatient to listen to herself (laughs) was actually quite interesting. Okay, uh, let's put that as your favorite. Yay. Yes, for the time being, let's put it there Mm. until I figure something else out. Okay. 
Cool. You also have Magic Duel. That was a great episode as well. Mm, with Trixie, right? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't one of my favorites. It was, <laughs> it was interesting to see Twilight learn more magic through... F- mm. Although I did like the switching off from the... Applejack. And Applejack. And Applejack uh, I can turn a mare into a star. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, the stallion was very funny. <laughs> And then, and then Friendship is Magic has rule 63. What oh. have we done? <laughs> uh, yes, bro, how could you? <laughs> but anyway, moving on. How did you become a fan of the show? Okay, that's a bit of a story. Sometime back, maybe during the second season, and going to the end of second season, um, before that, I wasn't really that much of a fan. Uh I, as much I wouldn't call myself a hater, but I just was a bit apprehensive watching My Little Pony, the new <laughs> version, because I still liked the old G1 style of art. But after being bugged and persuaded and you know, have harassed <laughs> continuously, watch the show, watch the show, watch the show, you like it, watch the show. I said, fine, I'll give it a shot. The first time I watched season one, episode one, I was really weirded out with the style. But I gave it a shot and I understood how the story grew. And after season one, it was like, okay, there's only part one, let's see part two. And then episode three, and then episode four. And so, you know what? I can live with the art. And I like the story. And then after finishing the first season, I said, fine, the art's not bad either. It's still very kiddish. I still think it's very kiddish, but I still like the show. I think it was a journey because I'm more story based than art based. Mm. Yeah, so I would love to show through the story first and then I went to the art. Mm, okay. that, that is an interesting story of how you became a fan. Usually mm. I don't hear those kind of stories. What do you mean? Well, some people say, oh, I had free time, so I watched the show mm. and I like it. Your, your story is much more deep. It was a build-up, actually. It took mm. a while for me to like it. But like I said, the story was deep and um, very well thought out. And truthfully speaking... Even from the beginning, I kind of liked the uh, Twilight's nerdy ass character. <laughs> nerdy, naive, it was actually quite adorable. But then, like I said, then the art grew on me. But it took a while, though. I have to admit, it took a while. Do you think that's one of the reasons why this show has clicked with so many nerds on the internet? Because Twilight is basically that kind of introverted nerd who likes to read books and is not that interested in making friends and socialize? No, I wouldn't say that. I would say that uh, from what I've heard of online, offline and other people who actually enjoy the show, a lot of them are caught by the maturity of the story where it is able to connect with both children as well as adults, uh, and it's not so childish to a sense. I mean, if you look at the first G1, and then G2, and then My Little Pony and Friends, it was very girlish, very simple. The adventure wasn't there. Or at least the adventure was dumbed down to a point that, you know, teens and adults don't find it so interesting. I didn't find it interesting. I couldn't stand watching My Little Pony and Friends. <laughs> but then when the, the latest one came along, yes, it was... A lot easier to swallow. You mean My Little Pony Tales, which will be considered the second TV show that came with the toys on Generation 3, right? Something like that, yeah. The, basically, if you want to look at the generation, it's 2 and 3. I really couldn't stand mm. it. Yeah, I can totally understand, because gener- the, the, the second TV show, that My Little Pony Tales, it was, it, it was pure slice of life. Mm. It didn't have any fantasy elements, there were no unicorns, there were no uh, Pegasus. Mm. They were all Earth ponies, and they all had to deal with day-to-day life things, like homework, boys, sports, and things like that. And yeah. I can totally see why some people might find it boring. Mm. Yeah, but still, G4 right now is where it's at. Mm-hmm. Technically speaking, we had a friend here um, who didn't like G4 because of the art style. She can appreciate the story, but she did not like the art oh. style. And, but she did enjoy the first generation, I, I think, for who the art. Who was that? One of our friends. Um, should we say her name? No, uh, no, she's yeah. not, she, she doesn't like to be openly mentioned, so yeah. let's just not. Okay. So let's just say a friend. <laughs> No, no, we can use a middle name. Use we can use a middle name because call her Anne. Anne, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just say Anne. That's perfectly fine too. I mean, hey, if you don't like the art style, but if you can appreciate the stories, that's that's perfect as well. No mm-hmm. problem. True, 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 true. 
like it's it, it's the same with la, the same as always. It's like you can enjoy anything you want. Just don't be a jerk about it. Mm, that's true. Like don't go out of your way to insult other people for liking something that you don't like, and don't try to impose your likings to others. Hmm, that is true. That, that's a good philosophy to live by. And Joe, how did your family and friends react to your love for the show? Truthfully speaking, I actually haven't told anyone. <laughs> It's uh, I'm actually quite a private person at home. Um, what I do, what I like, where I go, I don't. I'm uh, sorry, where I go, I usually tell my family. But my likes and dislikes, I usually keep it to myself. Mm. So, truthfully speaking, uh, my parents don't really know. Not because I don't want to tell them, but I choose not to tell them. Okay. Mm. And what about oh, your friends? Like, uh, oh, the friends who know, I'm actually quite uh, okay, okay with telling my friends because a lot of them are do like the show, so they're fine. But uh, truthfully speaking, if I actually meet anyone who's ever told me that they gave me any problems due to the fact I like the show, uh, they basically I am. I turn around and tell myself that they are not worth my time. Mm -hmm. So I do not have time for people who belittle me or simply because of what I like and dislike. I mean, hey, when I was in college, I had a friend who loved sewing clothes for Barbie dolls. I had no problems with him. And this is a dude, right? It's a guy. In fact, he's on my Facebook right now and he runs marathons. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't a problem. I mean, you like what you like. At the end of the day, you can even be gay. Just remember, I'm not gay. That's all. You know what? Your sexuality has absolutely nothing to do with your preference of hobbies. Mm -hmm. That is true. That is okay. True. Mm. Okay. Like that doesn't that doesn't mean anything. And by the way, I'm pretty sure like that that guy is heading towards uh, my dream job. He's going to end up doing costume design for a movie, a TV show, or, or just in general. I so I'm pretty that. jealous. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty jealous of your friend. I'm like, God damn, that's such a great idea. I wish I could like come up with designing clothes for toys. Okay, cool. I never did say he was very good at it. <laughs> well, you know what? Sucking at something is the first step to be good at something. <laughs> True enough. Mm -hmm. That's something I learned from Adventure Time. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> anyway... Thanks, Jed, for uh, sharing with us your stories. And uh, let's no move problems. on to the next topic. Sure. And the next topic is news time. And in today's news time, Buck announced first wave of guests. BuckCon 2014 has announced their first wave of guests coming all the way from America, their first VIP guest, GM Barrow, author of the My Little Pony books. Announcing the community guests, they have talented digital artist Toy Glia and returning guest Jami Bjork, an awesome Swedish cosplayer. There you go, sorry. Thank you, James. Links can be found in the show notes. So guys, Buck has announced their guests, and GM Barrow's awesome. I hope I get a chance to meet and talk to her. I already have a couple of questions that I want to ask her. They are the basic questions that I will ask to any uh, to any writer anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm going to save them for when the convention happens. Mm, true that, true that. But I just can't wait to get a chance to talk to her and to know her mindset on how things work. Especially the whole cadence story thing. Like, was it a bro main date or was it something that she thought of? Because the whole backstory of how cadence was born was really strange. <laughs> Anything to add more to this topic? No. Well, the, I just want to add that I am working on to become one of those show, uh, one of those uh, guests, community guests, mm. uh, because I want to do a couple of panels over there. I want to be representing the Pony Tumblr community uh, with Ask Movie Slate, and I want to be doing a panel on how to do Ask Pony Blogs and how to what to do and what not to do and. How to act with people and and all that. Like I I want to do something like that. Awesome. So yeah, I'm, I I have to. I actually haven't talked with the as of the time of recording the recording this podcast. I haven't talked to the the con organizer, but I'm going to be talking to them this weekend. So um, fingers crossed, I might be able to be there as a guest. Awesome, and same goes for me. I want to do a panel about podcasting and how to maintain a podcast and how to start one. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? We'll just have to wait and see. And moving on to the next topic, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, issue number 19, and My Little Pony, Friends Forever, issue number 5. 
here is some exciting news for anyone who is following the My Little Pony comics. Issue number 19 will feature an awesome story that everyone should read. Also, the My Little Pony Friends Forever issue number 5 features Fluttershy and Zokura. What story can we get out of these two characters? Well, find out in May. So, James and um, Jade, you guys read the comics, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah, so do I. From reading the synopsis for book number 19 and book number 5 of Friends Forever, I'm hyped. <laughs> I definitely am looking forward to it, but uh, wait, wow. uh, it's J- 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 um, James for James doesn't want to get spoiled on the. Oh, don't worry. I'm not. I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm just really, just thinking about the fact that it's in May. It's quite a long time more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to wait until May, but you have a couple of comics coming in between. Oh, yeah, you true have. Enough. You you have the the regular series coming on April and March, so mm-hmm. you're going to be fine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. That's true. But still, I can't wait for the May issue. It's really hype. The hype train is really hype. Uh, sorry, we can't talk much about this because it's spoiler territory for James. How about uh, us? Oh, I've got a question. Uh, what's James? What's your uh, in the micro series? Which one's your favorite? <laughs> oh my God, rarity! <laughs> oh, okay. I prefer the Bra- Luna storyline. <laughs> I love the Luna storyline. They are tied on there. Okay. Uh, Rarities and Lunas are my two favorite of the micros, and then followed very close by Twilight and Pinkie Pie. Mm. Mm. Twilight and Pinkie Pie is good. The Twilight one is hated by almost everybody in the fandom except me and another two guys. Hey, I like and the story too, James. I love, I love the Twilight story. It's brilliant. How small and how intimate it is. Like, it's not about fighting monsters or discovering artifacts. It's all about taking care of a library and breaking this writer away from her uh, retirement. Mm. That's very sweet and it's really in character with Twilight. That's why I don't understand why people hate it. They call it trite. They call it trash. And I'm like, you guys are a bunch of... That's not a word. I'm pretty sure you haven't even tried reading it. So, Jay, you have something to say? No, I was thinking about it actually, and um, yes, I did. I do understand why a lot of fans are unhappy with Twilight because they want to. They probably want more out of it. It seems very tame compared to others. I mean, I'm fine. I enjoyed the fact that uh, Twilight enjoyed herself in a massive library to a point that she actually forgot to do work and just kept reading. <laughs> but it, I can understand why people don't like it. It's not action packed enough. Mm, okay. it, it's kind of boring if you, if from their point of view. I mean, for us who understand Twilight's character, for us who, who like in my case, I really love Twilight. Okay, in fact, I'm Twilight crazy about it. <laughs> so I actually understand it's not action packed enough, but it's her. Mm. It's what she likes. In fact, ask her to go into to look for Zakora for plants. Versus going to a new library, I can tell you can tell which one you choose first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's true. And as for me personally, I, it sets the tone of how this new series is going to be told. Because when we were first given the whole My Little Pony comic issue, it was all adventure action, adventure action. Oh yeah, the first one was adventure all over the place. Yeah, over the, yeah the, fir- the first the first two story arcs were just pure action adventure nonstop. The, the the one with the return of Queen Chrysalis and the one with uh, Nightmare Rarity. Yep. And with the micro series, it sets the tone that it's going to be more relaxed and chill and, and more them. Yeah. Each yeah. one. Yeah. It tells the story of the character goes even further to their psyche. Okay. So speaking about characters, if you don't mind me adding, mm-hmm. there is one picture of one. Facial expression of one pony, which I absolutely just adored. It was uh, Luna's micro storyline, <laughs> and when she gave the giant sigh, <laughs> ah yes, her face was yes. so ah finally. Andy Price says that uh, Princess Luna is his favorite thing to draw, <laughs> and you can tell why in that in that in that comic. Yes. He had a lot of fun drawing Luna. And in such undignified ways. <laughs> <laughs> they are approved! Da! Da! Can, can I have cake? <laughs> Will there be cake? <laughs> can I have cake? Please? 
Do you know what all that saturated sugar is going to do to you? It will do me very happy. Uh, I do love the Luna Micro, but the Red Leaf Micro is also good. Release uh, me. I shall. I any, need. I must vanquish the blue unicorn. Basically, anything anything done by Andy Price and Katie Cook, you know, is going to be awesome. Like they they are the guys who did the Chrysalis uh, arc. They did the Big Macintosh arc and mm. the Shining Armor and Cadence arc. They also did the Fall of Sunset Shimmer uh, micro uh, micro storyline that came before the Quest Girls uh, uh-huh. annual, and both the Rarity and the Princess Luna micros. Mm, that is true. They are really really good. Oh, um, fun fact about that. Uh, Andy Price and Katie Cook are also going to do book number 19. Okay. Yes, yes. They are doing this upcoming storyline that is going to be four cha- four issues. It's going to be super long, and by the looks mm. of it, it's going to be incredibly epic. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it's... It, how do I say? I'm all aboard the hype train now. Anybody <laughs> want to join me? I am. I am on the hype train. <laughs> <Woo-hoo>! hey. <laughs> anyway... Let's move on to the next topic. All right. And next topic is guest time. And in today's guest time, we have Julie the Dragon, a writer. How are you, Joe? Oh, I'm good, actually. So, um, mind telling us who you are and what you do to the people who might not know what you do? Uh, I shall refrain from telling about my life because it's actually <laughs> quite boring. All right. <laughs> well, just... Uh, Tell us about what you do in the fandom. All right. Tell uh, us all the juicy details. Mm-hmm. There is no juicy details. I work in an administrative department. <laughs> it's not juicy. <laughs> oh, that's because you're not looking at it with the right glasses. Just let me get you the juicy glasses. You will be able to see everything. You're going to start shipping everyone in the, in the, in the department. Okay, I'm afraid me. you're going to tell me to wear rose tinted glasses or something. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. A little bit about myself. Oh, well, when it comes to the fandom, I actually do like writing. Uh, my ideas come to me and I write it, but sadly, to Norman's uh, dismay, I haven't been writing in a while and he's been bugging me for to continue, especially my OC's story, backstory, actually. I just want a story, man. <laughs> but, you're, so, basically, you're a fanfic writer. Right? Yes, I'm a fanfic writer. Mm-hmm. So, how long have you been in the fandom with the whole fanfic writing? Uh, fanfic writing specifically since September 2012, but I've been a fan maybe a few months, maybe a year before that. Mm, so, Give or take, really. so, you're saying um, for ponies or other fandoms? Mm. Because of the timeline you say? No, mostly ponies. No. Because right. uh, I do like to write for others. Like uh, my own personal storylines, like there are a few adventure stories I do write, mm-hmm. but I keep on finding myself being dragged back to pony style with writing. Well, that was before, and like I said, I haven't been writing for a while. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Norman. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Everyone's busy. So, how do you get started in writing? Oh, I've always liked writing. Actually, no, to be more precise, I've always liked dreaming. Dreaming? Dreaming. Okay. Um, I, when I was younger, I had a very vivid imagination. I would like to say I still have it. So I decided, after being introduced to the fan fi- uh, film fictions, um, fan fiction website, I decided, you know what, let's try. I mean, I was told by a lot of friends, just give it a shot. You know, you'll never know. What if someone likes it? What if someone doesn't like it? Just give it a shot. And I did. And one of the stories which actually caught my eye was... Uh, I hope the guy doesn't mind me mentioning his name, but there was one guy who, on film fiction, his name is Malajong. Mm-hmm. And he did, he's a massive Spike lover. So he used to write stories, and I thought he stopped, he, he did a Spike's Luna. So I decided that would be my second attempt. My first attempt was really bad. Nobody seems to enjoy it at all. So I, I, I just shelved it. With permission from Malajong, I took his story and I wrote it and I continued with it. So that was my... Second attempt, and it was actually well liked. Then I started doing other stories as well, as other ideas started coming in. Mm, so, okay. And then, well, then, like I said, I stopped for a while. Oh, life, life can get in the way. Mm-hmm. So, what kind of stories do you like to write? Hmm. Mm. Uh, well, I prefer shipping, actually. 
But you know, I, I try. I a lot. All my stories are three. Okay. It is more emotional rather than uh, physical. Oh. Clop. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, there is a difference between shipping and clop. Yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. Is that shipping is usually shipping is really emotional, but when you get into the, you know, beyond that, it gets mm-hmm. explicit, it becomes clop. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't worry. With, when you, when, believe me, when you say shipping, people are going to understand it as emotional kind of yeah. shipping. Mm. French shipping. <laughs> French shipping. Uh, no, no. <laughs> not really. <laughs> uh, my current story, now, which I actually put on pause, but I actually do want to continue writing, is uh, oh, and the reason I did this particular shipping is because I really like unicorns. So it's between Twilight and Rarity. But if you look in the, in the shows, I find that Twilight and Rarity are very, very close. Really, it it, it shows. I mean, they for one thing, they are. Like, for example, mm-hmm. um, in the end of season three, when uh, Twilight became an eloquent, who is the first person to go up and rub cheeks with her? Who is the first person? In fact, who is the first person to rub cheeks with, with uh, Twilight in almost all, in all uh, sh- most shows? It's always rarity. James, is this true? That is actually correct. Mm. Um, it, goes to the, it goes to the extent that when uh, Twilight passes the test at the beginning of season three, uh, the one that starts singing out of her friends, the one that starts it all, is Rarity. Mm. And so, it, yeah, yeah, mm. they, they, they can be quite... I can see why you may ter- interpret that as them being close. Mm. Uh, from my perspective, honestly, I think that the ones that are closer are uh, Twilight and Rainbow Dash. Mm. But, that, yeah, that, that's, but that, that's, that's, because, that's because I really enjoy to, uh, I really enjoy to ship Twilight and, and Dash. <laughs> uh, yes, I've noticed a lot of people like Rainbow uh, Twilight and Dash, but truthfully speaking, I prefer Twilight and Rarity. Um, mostly because I don't enjoy too much of the tomboyish attitude of, of to, uh, Rainbow in the storyline. <laughs> Sorry, but that's me. <laughs> hey, hey, it's fine, man. Don't worry. Okay, okay. So, the current story you're writing, what is it about? There are actually three stories that I'm trying to finish up, actually. Oh, okay. One of them is the Spikes Luna, which... Um, it, actually, the first chapter or two happens during Nightmare Night. So it's mm-hmm. like in the background, the shadows, things that happen that the audience doesn't see. What does Luna do in the background? What does Spike do in the background? And so forth. So that was the Spike Luna. Right now, I actually got uh, Luna to invite Spike to the castle to spend some quality time as friends while Rarity is there during the... Uh, um, uh, the Art of the Dress uh, song oh, yeah, that time. Yeah. Okay, so, so... Wait, Art of the Dress? No, that is... Uh, not Art of the Dress, sorry. Uh, um, when, she, when she's invited to the castle... Indeed. Ah, yes. And during the episode, Rarity is there at the castle. Mm. But behind the scenes, Spike is there spending time with Princess Luna. Ah. So I'm doing that. So that's hard because you have to get the timeline just right. Mm, okay. okay, and then explain why is this happening. So that's that's one. <laughs> okay. The second one, which is more, uh, which is easier to control, is my romance between uh, between unicorns, which is the Twilight and Rarity. I enjoyed that because I got Zakora to help get them together, <laughs> which is a whole section of Zakora rhyming. <laughs> I enjoyed that too. So and, you would say you enjoy doing the rhymes? Then? Oh, I enjoy doing the rhymes. <laughs> I enjoy doing the rhymes. It's actually quite interesting to get it working right and when you get like about a four line massive paragraph of rhyme setup it is like ah, I got it got it lights. works <laughs> so if I were to ask you could you do a rhyme now uh, no not, no 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 I'm not Zakora <laughs> I can write for Zakora but not I'm not Zakora <laughs> okay, okay, okay. the last story is my OC and uh, my OC uh, do you want to know about it or should I just tell them what it no, is no uh, do Give us a proper setup because I read it, I know, but the audience don't. So give a setup. Okay, a setup. Huh? Uh, it takes place at uh, end of season Candle one. Wendy. Yeah, it's end of season one, right? No, two. two it's uh, the Candle two, Sorry, Wendy. end of season two, the, the royal wedding. Mm-hmm. All right? Um, basically, my OC is this short, stubby, unattractive little pony, a uh, little unicorn who has no magical abilities or very little magical abilities and has lived his life the earth pony way. <laughs> okay? During the attack on the castle, uh, he gets trapped just like everyone else. And 
he tries his best to escape. He uses uh, magic to break the, the sticky goop that he's mm-hmm. stuck in. It doesn't work. He tries to pull his way out. It doesn't work. The changelings sneer and laugh at him. So in his desperation, he tries to teleport. He thinks maybe if he teleports out, he can teleport himself and not the goop out of there. Mm-hmm. But remember what I said, he has almost no magical ability. So it's, it just doesn't work. But in his desperation, he pushes himself further than he ever did and he starts becoming translucent, a little... Uh, almost there. He's almost there. So it's half there, half not there. In a blast of magic, which was uh, uh, the love. Shining Armor's magic, mm-hmm. he reactivated the shield, right? Mm-hmm. And the changes were pushed all away from Cantalot. In that instant, one of the changelings flew towards my character, my OC. And because he was half there with his teleport spell, the changeling went right through him. Mm-hmm. So, a little bit of the changeling's magic has been transferred into him. And because now he's part changeling, <laughs> or at least he's got the residue of changeling magic, he was whacked mm-hmm. out of Cantalot. And he landed in Zakora's hut. <laughs> How can he do it? And so, hijinks then. Mm-hmm, sorry. And yeah, and, thing, and things happen up there. So, um, Zakora finds him, nurses him back to health, and he finds he's changed. He's taller, he's better looking. Well, mm-hmm. not by much, but he's, he's actually a normal sized tall pony. A standard size? Please. Standard size. Mm-hmm. And he's a unicorn, of course. Mm-hmm. I, won't go into, I won't go into too much details. The, the story is actually up on film fiction. Mm-hmm. But, should I just say what his abilities are? Uh, just. Um, give some teaser because I want people to read. It's a really good read and pressure you to write some more. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's put it this way. He has his his unicorn shape is not the only shape he, he can take. <laughs> but there are limitations because he's not pure changeling. He's just got residual changeling magic. Let's just say he's not OP. <laughs> oh, yes, he's not OP. He's not OP. He's not OP. <laughs> He can't be an elecorn. <laughs> <laughs> All OCs must become elecorn one day. <laughs> nah. Does that mean the movie's like this going to turn into an alicorn? I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> one elecorn's in there. One new elecorn's in there. Indeed, indeed. I just hope they don't come bring up every season, end of the season, new elecorn. End of the season, new <laughs> Oh, one of our guests, Alpha Brony, had this theory. Do you say that there's going to be five years of ponies, so five seasons of ponies? Mm-hmm. So every season there's going to be a new Elecorn? Actually, there was a comic on, I can't remember where there. So once Twilight unlocks the, the uh, box, there's wings and horns for everybody. <laughs> uh, maybe they don't want Twilight to die alone. Oh, no, 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 to live alone. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's sad. But so, um, what inspires you to write your stories? Love of fiction, love of fan, uh, film fiction. Really, I do love it. I do go into film fiction. I mean, sadly, I haven't gone in in a while because of other things that's actually occupying my time. Oh, by the way, I'm actually trying to take my degree. Oh, okay. in English. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm actually maybe in halfway through my my course, and assignments are building up like crazy. It's getting harder and harder. So life is in the way. Then life is getting in the way. Yeah. I'm writing again. But the funny thing is, mm-hmm. I'm taking an English course, which is writing. <laughs> Uh, so, but you're writing for the wrong page. No, I am writing for the right page. I'm trying to get my degree. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you're saying the fandom is inspiring you to write? Basically, I read some of the stories that's on film fiction, and I love the way they write it. And I, like I said, I want to do the same. Mm. So it's it's that's where it got me started writing. In mm. fact, I used to write for another um, forum where I participated in. In a uh, long discussion based role play. Oh, okay. Uh, I rather not mention because it don't, it's uh, well, not safe for Wuna. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> not safe for Wuna. Oh, so I used no. to participate in uh, role play on this forum in various different genres. So I decided I liked writing and I liked bringing what I had in my head to life. And then when I started, fell in love with uh, MLP FIM um, and I found FIM fiction. I guess it's like the the, the, the normal trail. Like it, it ended up me writing anyway. Mm. Oh, so like okay. I said, as much as I enjoy writing, sadly I don't have the time 
or in some sense, I may not even have the motivation because I'm half dead after doing assignments. Mm-hmm. But yes, I don't worry. Now, when I intend to continue writing, <laughs> yay! <laughs> Let's hope that it goes on. I, 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 I shall hound you till it's finished. You already do. How much more hounding you want? <laughs> Every day, I'll call you. <laughs> Uh, James, any questions for Jake? Yeah, I was want to. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, what's your favorite writer? Like, not writer on uh, on on film fiction or on fan fiction in general, but the 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 writer that you are like, oh my god, I love this guy's stuff. David Gamble. David Gamble. Uh what did he write? Mm-hmm. He writes a lot of medieval fiction based uh, novels. He also has a style of adding actual uh, legends into his story. For example, there's one story where he added he the sinking of Atlantis is part of his uh, medieval fiction. Oh, really? There's another story where Sir Lancelot and the uh, Lady of the Lake, how the Lady of the Lake put, grabbed the sword, the timing and all. Uh, his style of writing is also quite interesting because some of his stories, he likes to throw the reader into the middle of things and then later at the end of the book you finally figure out that's why also I love the fact that he's also very descriptive some writers I won't mention who example when the hero swings his axe and it connects with the target with his, with his victim and it just he, the, the writer will just say the, the axe has hit him he slices through his, his chest and armor and then the guy bleeds to death and it's boring Mm-hmm. Uh, in comparison with David Gamble, who can write an entire paragraph of an axe killing a guy. <laughs> he writes how the axe hits him, cleaves through his armor, uh, exits out the back of his rib, back of, through his back, pulling the rib cage as well as all of his... Mm-hmm. Uh, it's quite descriptive. Okay. So, on top of that, the last thing I love, which I picked up from his writing, is he doesn't leave blanks. In a sense that when he writes... There's, let's say it's night time. The hero, the hero puts up a campfire. In a lot of stories, it's, that's just it. Mm-hmm. He sets up the fire, he cooks his meal, he goes to sleep, or something along that line. It's very easy. For him, there is a chance that you might actually get a page or two of the campfire alone. He tells you how the hero looks for a long, tall piece of flat rock, puts the fire next to the rock so that the fire heats the rock, and radiates heat back into the campsite. So there's something you learn. He mentions there's a stray wolf that comes along into his campsite. He noticed the wolf's leg is lame. Therefore, he probably was kicked out from his pack because he can no longer contribute. Things like that, the fillers are important. Mm-hmm. And I picked up on that. So whenever I write, I try not to leave too much empty holes in the story. I try and fill up everything with something interesting. Oh, okay, but wouldn't, wouldn't writing like that considered to be purple prose? He is kind of like the way you're describing him. He is kind of like a niche uh, style of uh, writer that not many people will enjoy his his style of writing. He is not particularly dry, but he might be way too descriptive when it's, when it comes to writing. I mean, oh, there are many yeah. classic writers who do this. H.P. Lovecraft has a novel called In the Mountains. <laughs> in, in, uh, when you read In the Mountains of Madness, he has like three pages. Just to tell you that it was a cold day in Antarctica, <laughs> and that's it. Wow. Like, but the, 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 the way he, the way he, the way that Lovecraft writes is that he draws you into the environment. So by the time you're done reading, you actually feel like you are standing in the surface of Antarctica. Uh, the thing, I understand. I understand where you're coming from, man. But uh, what I mean is, his his balance is there. Uh, I, I suggest if you can ever find his book, the first book he ever wrote. In the title is just called Legends. Oh, sorry, Legend, no S. Okay. That is the first book I read, and that's the first book I fell in love with. And I decided to read all his books. I've actually read every book, but there are only two books I just don't like. It's called The Lion of Macedon, and I can't remember the other one. But these are the only two books which I really could say, because these are very history-based, which mm. I fell asleep. <laughs> all right, all the rest right. are pretty good. I, I suggest that you pick up some one of his books and read it. It's worth it. Oh, by the way, he's dead. Huh? <laughs> I think he died in 2007. Oh, yeah. And his last book, his last book was, uh, his, no, his, he finished his second last, halfway through his second last book, and his wife took over and finished the, last, the second last, and then the wife took all his notes 
and re and wrote the third book because it was part of a trilogy. Oh, okay. Mm. So, so his wife finished the last book. So how was it? Like the whole story, did it work? From the wise perspective? Yes, because uh, David Gamow was actually very precise with his uh, notes. Yeah. Oh. And she just had to... She didn't even need to, to think much because it was there already. Mm-hmm. All she needed to do was to, just to write it to make it interesting to the reader. That's it. That's like with Michael Crichton. Michael Crichton died in 2008. And after that, he, pu- he published two books because they were like kind of finished. And again, mm-hmm. his wife found the, the, the manuscript on his studio. Mm. Wow, this this reminds me of, of from stories I heard about. Uh, G, who's the guy who wrote for Game of Thrones? That's George R. <laughs> R. Martin. Yeah, from from what I heard from his stories, that he has a long way to go, and if anything bad happens to him, he has a descriptive note somewhere around. So I, I think. That's a good thing for most writers to have. Yeah, because even though they don't want death to stop their work. Mm. What's the character you find the hardest to write for? Pinkie Pie. <laughs> really? <laughs> Sorry, I am not. I'm not a Pinkie Pie person. Huh. Even in real life, I am not a Pinkie Pie person. I don't enjoy jumping, running, screaming, having parties. No, I am not. A, I'm not a Pinkie Pie person. In all the characters, Twilight and Rarity are the easiest for me to write. Mm. I cannot write for. Uh, let's see, Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash are the two of my hardest. Uh, Applejack's not so bad. Fluttershy is actually okay, but the two unicorns are my favorite and they're the easiest to write. Mm. Would you say that your <coughs> love for Twilight makes it easier for you to write? Maybe I'm a little biased in that, yes. So probably. Mm. I'm not afraid to say that. <laughs> and James, if I'm not mistaken, you also write fiction, right? Uh, dude, that was like... Back in two thousand and eleven, back in two thousand and eleven, that's that was in the in the in the Stone Age uh, of this fandom. <laughs> yes, I did write I did write five no uh, three three fanfics and they are up in fan mm-hmm. in fan fiction and all that. But I didn't I didn't get to write more because I wasn't interested on continuing on the on the fanfic writing, and I focused on the on the artwork doing. Art. Okay. But did you ever had a chance to write for Pinkie Pie? Uh, yeah, I actually did write for Pinkie Pie twice. How was it for you? Well, it wasn't that difficult. This is season one Pinkie Pie. Season one Pinkie Pie is very basic. She is not super uh, developed like she is now in season four. Mm-hmm. Okay. For me, with Pinkie Pie, like I, I don't say I write, but I kind of try to imagine her personality and she's hard to imagine for because she is really diverse and it's really hard for me to yeah. kind of... The, the random factor in Piggy Pie is a little hard to emulate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you said that you have a hard time with Pinky Pie and, and Rainbow Dash. Rainbow These Dash. are the two uh, top difficult right to, to write for so what's wrong with Rainbow Dash um, well Rainbow, I do not know see it's not that I don't like to write for Rainbow Dash Rainbow Dash's character is a little hard to write for because I don't think that I can write an adventure epic enough for her hmm. so it's it's like if I try to I've tried to write for Rainbow Dash and it doesn't feel it fits the character because the story is too mundane Hmm. Uh, I am. I am not. I'm not an epic writer. I'm more of a uh, down to earth writer. Mm-hmm. So it's a little hard to go all out for. Like I said, for Rainbow and Piggy Pie, you need writers who are willing and able and have the imagination and the skill to go all out. Mm-hmm. I don't. <laughs> but you know, the way I think of Rainbow Dash is write a story for her where it's kind of a slice of life, like a micro series, instead of going epic. Mm-hmm. Just write something simple, like she goes to Sugar Cube Corner and her adventures going to Sugar Cube Corner. Okay, that would be an interesting tale of character. I wouldn't say character design, but just a character story about her trip to Sugar Cube Corner and what she sees and what she does, or how she interprets things. Actually, I rather write for Derpy. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody loves the dirt pony. 
Derby is a difficult character, character to, to write for because it, what do you have to work with in the show that, like, what, what can you work with that they give you? They, they give you nothing except her background appearance. They don't give her any personality. They don't give her nothing. And in the fandom, there are so many different interpretations of Derpy. Like, there is the, there is the Derpy being a, mo- a motherly point, and there is the Derpy that messes things up all the time. There is the Derpy that is the assistant of Dr. Hooves. There are so many different interpretations of Derpy that is just, uh, which one do you focus on, or do you come up with your own? Will that upset people, or, like, that's, that is quite something to take into account. Wow. That's true. That's true. But uh, in what I, how I do, like for example, I mentioned earlier I was having a, a RPG session with my friends, right? I I run sessions myself, and this uh, to answer your question, how do you write for Derpy? Is the same answer how I tell my friends how do I write for my sessions? If no one has said no, it can be done. Mm. So therefore, you're. Just because the shows don't give you enough information doesn't mean the information doesn't exist. You can make it up. Of course, try not to go too out of character, but um, use whatever little you have and build from there. Derpy is clumsy, yes. But in the comics, or actually in the fan- fandom, they, they portray her as a mother. You don't have to make her a mother, but you can make her caring. You can make her that she tries. Um, there's one comic on, uh, what you call it, Deviant which I'm actually following. It's called Dash Academy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah Derpy uh, is in it. I, I'm doing, yeah, I'm doing the, the banner for the, for the YouTube dub of the, seri- of the comic. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing the banner. I'm working with the guys that are, that are doing the YouTube channel. I absolutely love the comic, actually. I'm still waiting for it to finish. <laughs> There's a lot of comics I'm following on Deviant Art, actually. But, yeah, I can't but, but you were saying about Dash Academy and Derpy. Uh, basically, so Derpy is there. She's made mistakes. So she's, she's hmm, human, in a sense. Mm. Okay, so she's made mistakes. She suffers for the mistakes, yet she tries. So it's it's it doesn't mean that just because the MLP doesn't give you enough Derpy on in Derpy screen time means it's uh, you can't write. It's just whatever you want her to be. But like for me, if I were to write for Derpy, I, would pl- I won't put her as the mother of... The, of uh, what's her name? Ditsy. Ditsy. I won't put her as the mother of Ditsy, but I'll put her as in trying her best to help out in all sorts of ways around town, messing up half of them, <laughs> okay, but still being apologetic and doing her best to, to fix the problem. So it's very slice of life. Very, yeah, I think that's the best. Very slice of life. Oh, okay, I do like your concept. I do like your concept. Then I'm shelving that idea for now, okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a concept. It's not out yet. But I, I too had this idea for a story. But the, the story is essentially before the Daring Do episode. What was it, James? Season 4? Daring Do episode? Yeah, uh, the, yeah, in season 4 it will be Daring Don't. Yeah, okay, the Daring Don't. So my idea was Rainbow Dash caught wind of movie that's going to be made in Ponyville. They're going to do the Daring Do movie and they're going to film it in Ponyville. And Rainbow Dash is hyped for it to come and she wants to see the actress that's going to be played Daring Do and things that she's going to be really hyped. But in reality, the actress who's playing Daring Do is really shy and meek. So the lesson there is how would Rainbow Dash cope with her idol and stuff? But since season four came along, my idea was crush. <laughs> well, no, not, necess- but, not necessarily, Norman. I, I know. I you know, can still no, no, no. You can mean, still go with the idea untouched. You just need to add something with it to it. You know what you have to put on it to make it work. Yeah, I, I kind of because no, no, no. The, okay, okay. No, I... no. Please ask me because this is something that people usually <laughs> no, uh, really. This is something that people get confused but... with saying, "Oh, my idea right. is ruined. My fanfic is ruined." Whenever something that happens in the show tramples your fanfic or your story or your comic, okay. you just need to slap the label alternate universe on it. <laughs> really? Okay. It works. Mm-hmm. I have seen so okay. many pieces of fan of fanfic saved because of that simple action. Well, to be honest, the way I was thinking about it is it, instead of uh, a fictional daring do, 
let's just say it's an actress who's playing Daring Do and Rainbow Dash still gets the hype because the real Daring Do is out on an adventure and I can analyze her. So at least I have a celebrity to analyze now. <laughs> uh, still works. But Jay, how do you handle canon messing around with your story? I don't. Really? I so don't. you I never no had problems. a story where you write something and mm. the show kind of canonize something that... No, because my show, my, my stories are never canon. Mm. I do not allow the stories to be messed up but due to canon because I it's, a, it's fiction. It's personal fiction. Mm-hmm. So, uh, for example, like... Uh, Love the sorry, the romance between the two unicorns. It will never happen in the show. Well, I won't say it will never happen. <laughs> I'm hoping it does, but it, it it has not happened. So it works out in my end. In fact, the story is before uh, Twilight even became a princess. Mm. So it doesn't mess up my story. But the OCs, my OC, it doesn't mess up because it's um, I do not place it in the timeline where it has any importance in the show. Mm. The only one which is important enough that, that it follows the timeline is Spikes Luna because everything... I, that, that's what I'm trying to do. Everything about Spikes Luna happens in the background of every... of various episodes. Mm. So I have... That one is where I have to get timeline correct. So, so but because it's past, it's easy to play with. Mm, so basically you use the past... Past episodes, to and I and I slot in the the characters which I want to portray mm-hmm. into the story behind the scenes when they are not being shown on screen. Ah, okay. That's like there was this, uh, there's a section in mind where it didn't in the in the film fiction where it didn't turn out very well. It was a random junk of stories, a random people. Do. You know, there's one episode in season one or two where um, Big Mac was injured. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's got this bandit around his waist. Yeah, that was episode four of season one, Apple Box season. Apple Box season, right? Mm-hmm. So in the very beginning, um, Apple sorry, Applejack taps uh, Big Mike's ribs and he mm-hmm. cringes, right? Yeah. How did he get the injury? I wrote about that as <laughs> well. So that one was not that great for you? It didn't work out because I didn't get many many likes out of that, but it didn't matter to me. So the thing is, that was a continuation because before that, it was um, everybody wanted the golden ticket from mm-hmm. Twilight, remember? Mm-hmm. So I linked the two as in, in between the story. After Applejack got her ticket and how uh, Big Mac got, got, got in, that's so I linked them together. Oh. That was quite fun. That, that was fun, but it wasn't. Um, it wasn't well received because I put it in a section of film fiction where I called it my random my random bits of story oh. so overall but eh, it didn't matter to me oh, okay. I actually put in in that section I actually put in one of my one of the dreams I had <laughs> one of the rare few times I actually dream at night I actually put it in and that's probably because I was listening to this to Owl City's version of <laughs> the Fluttershy some of the uh. Uh, Oh, okay. Yeah, so then, then I actually had a dream also. I decided to write it down. It was actually quite nice. Actually. Oh. A lot of people seem to to like the... One guy actually said, you lucky devil. I'm like, really? <laughs> I, I think I think Chia would be, would be a bit uh, jealous if you, mm. if you read it. <laughs> but, but, but uh, so, as for now, mm. you're, you're hyping yourself up. Like, as for me, I'm hearing all these stories and I'm really interested in reading more mm. but unfortunately for us you're on hiatus <laughs> yeah on hiatus because of life so because of college yeah really. yeah true true great don't remind me I still have a time to finish true I'm sorry but right now out of all the stories that you have which one are you really proud and say go read this to know me to know me yeah. oh, that's a bit hard because uh, the only story which I have that uh, to know me per se, is probably the OC. But the OC wasn't done as great as I would have hoped. In fact, I am most proud of uh, Unicorn Romance. Mm. Oh, sorry, Romance Between Two Unicorns. And that's finished? No. Oh. Uh, although a lot of people say that it's good. I thought it's finished because there was actually a, a good en- uh, ending there. I might actually close it and put uh, Romance Between Two Unicorns Part 2. Ah. I'm actually close the first one, complete it, mm-hmm. and then continue later. Then, I, then at least the story doesn't seem like, oh, look, there are 15, 16, 17 <laughs> chapters. It's a bit of an overkill. All right, all right, all right. No problem then. So you mentioned earlier that you play, uh, you play D&D, right? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. So have you ever thought about mixing ponies and D&Ds? 
Oh, that has been a question that has been asked a few times before, actually. Uh, let's put it this way. I have tried to make uh, a RPG for MLP. But coming up with a full different uh, st- uh, game mechanism is bloody hell hard. There are so many that already exist. It's a bit hard to come up with something because whatever you come up with, somebody's already done it. Mm-hmm. So, um, I'm not in the business of trying to recreate a full uh, game design. So, what I have been thinking of was taking an existing game design, uh, Pathfinder, for instance, and converting it to, well, in a sense, ponify it. Mm-hmm. But in order to ponify it, because of the fact that I don't think a lot of players would want to take a pony and ram its horn right through <laughs> the, the, uh, the mm. owlbear or something. All so, right. I have to take... I have to tweak it, a, tweak a lot, but at least I have a base to play with. Mm. Fun fact about Pathfinder with ponies: uh, there is someone on mm-hmm. Kickstarter who has managed to get it fully funded and have a pony-based game with the Pathfinder engine. Oh, now I'm interested to look that up. Uh, I, if someone has restarted it, then. There's no, there's no need for me to to rack my brain about it. <laughs> I can let someone else handle it for me. True, and also there's a Savage World RPG mm-hmm. that's been ponified. And wow, why have I not heard about this? <laughs> but no, uh, it's from what I can tell, um, that is a really fun experience to have where role playing with ponies. And I bet if you could manage to run it or DM it or whatever it is, I'm sure me and James would be interested in playing it. Oh, okay. Uh, I've got to... Okay, since you said that there's already someone who's doing it, if they haven't released their notes, then I will have to redo everything from scratch. Mm. But if I do find online people who have really tried to qualify um, an RPG like Pathfinder, I can take their notes, take whatever is good, and alter whatever didn't work to see what went. Because, you see, what happened was, I took uh, D20 Modern, which is the modern setting for D&D, mm-hmm. and created my own StarCraft design. Oh, wow. StarCraft, somebody did it online, and they posted on the Wizard of the Coast um, website. Mm-hmm. I took his notes, I modified it, and I, and I changed it to f- suit my needs. Mm-hmm. And I already played the it a few times. My players seem to like it, but... Um, I still need to tweak it a little bit. For example, I forgot to give Protoss shields. <laughs> so, oh. yeah, it, 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 it is a little bit of tweaking. So, say, if I find someone who has their notes put up on online for a ponified version of Pathfinder, I'll probably try and tweak it as, as well. Mm. But, uh, yeah, now I'm just adding more on my plate. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and if I remember right, um, Savage World, have you played it before? No, I'm afraid I haven't touched Savage World before. Mm. There is a guy on DeviantArt who has the game set and it's available for the taking, if you mm. would say. I'll have a look at it later. Yeah, I- I'll show it to you if I can find it. But cool. it's out there and it's there for free for you to take. Mm. But anyway, um, James, any last questions for Jay? No, not really. No. Oh, okay. So, I think we have been running a bit long. Oh, well. (laughs) Indeed. This is one of those interviews where it's really strange. But anyway, um, since I don't want to keep you up late now... Oh, don't worry about it. I'm fine, man. (laughs) So, let's try and end this quick. Uh, Jay, thank you for coming on and thank you for being an awesome guest. So, where can the people at home who are listening to this and the stream can find you? Find me? Yeah, your page. Thing. Oh, you mean <laughs> okay. Basically, uh, if you go to Film Fiction, okay, and you look up my uh, account name, it's uh, Jewel, J E W E L, underscore Eater, E A T E R, underscore Dragon, D R A G O N. So, Jewel Eater Dragon. Jewel Eater Dragon. Alrighty then, so I'll just put it in the show notes. So, anywhere else, like uh, Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter, or even... Uh, I don't Twitter, I don't... Uh, actually, I'm very... I'm, I'm, a, I'm a social... An online social hermit, actually. <laughs> Except for the film fix, then. Except for the film fix, yeah. Alrighty then, I'll be sure to put that in the show notes. 
And let's move on to the next topic. Shoutouts. Yes, my first shoutout goes to you, Jay. Thank you for being on and thank you for being an awesome guest. Oh, thank you for having me. Awesome. And to you, James, and everyone on the live stream. You guys have <laughs> been awesome. Thank you. And James, what about you? Oh, I give a shout out to Jade, of course, for oh, being you. such a cool guest. And uh, one for Norman as well. Because, Norman, come on. And, of course, a shout out to all the people that are checking out the stream right now who are being cool and brilliant, like they always are. And I think that's about it, yeah. All right, cool. And Jade, what about you? Any shout outs? I, truthfully speaking, don't know what a shout out is. So it's, I'll tell you what, I'll give a shout out to both you and James for having me here. And and whoever is actually on typing terms with us right now. <laughs> Yay, there's a lot of you people. Thumbs up, man. <laughs> thank you, thank you for, for, for turning up. Yay. And anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshow at gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, you can reach us in, well, the show notes. The show notes has everything. And you can also reach us on Twitter. The MBS Show account is at the MBS Show. Sweetie Bot will tweet about stuff that annoys her, especially the editing. And you can tweet me at Norman Sanzo. I usually tweet about food toys and whatever tickles my fancy. Recently, I tweet about food. Yum. And James, what about you? Uh, you can find me on James underscore Cork uh, on Twitter, and you can find my DeviantArt Gallery on jamescork.deviantArt.com, and you can check my Ask Pony Tumblr on askmovieslate.tumblr.com. Ooh, talking about Tumblr, James, Dusty Cat replied to your tweet. That's awesome. Um, did he? Yeah. I didn't even notice. <laughs> Dusty Cat Senpai noticed you. Hmm. Uh, well, yeah. I didn't notice Dusty Cat Senpai, so... <laughs> I wonder who's the Senpai now. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been James... Oh my god, the live stream is crapping up on me, Cork. And this is Jewel Eater Dragon. Thank you very much for having me. No problem. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Take care, people. Bye, everybody. Bye.
And the next topic is... Oh, wait, what happened? Uh, oh, yeah, I... My bad, I derp on topics. I'm sorry, give me a second. <laughs> uh, okay, three, two, one. Also announcing their community guest, talented digital artist, Twy... Lee... How do you, how do you say that? Twy Lee. Ah, Twy Lee, sorry, thank you. Um, um, talented, art, talented digital artist, Twy Lee. And returning guests, Yami... Oh god, I'm so good. Do you want me to read them for you, Norman? You seem to be having trouble with it. <laughs> no, it's, it's just a Swedish name. Uh, let I'm me open butch. the let me open the show notes and I will give you a hand with it because you're battling the language and the ba- the language is pretty number five. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I'm sorry. This would make a wonderful outtake.